Hello, everyone. I want to go ahead and just make this quick video going over P2L. Uh, my office hours, I recorded them, but the recording got corrupted. So sorry about that. This should hopefully be a bit more useful because it's like, you know, a bit more organized. So yeah, we're just going to go into basically how you can approach this problem, what we're even asking in the first place, and just some coding techniques you can use to solve it. So the purpose of the linker is we're going to be given a certain number of files in the command line. And our job is to go ahead and combine those files into just one complete file. The files given to you are going to be in the format like this. So it's basically going to be some assembly code assembled with your P2A assembler. So up here we have the header, our entire text section, our data section, symbol table, and relocation table. So for this, we're going to go through and figure out how we can link these two files together and what that process looks like. So the main thing that's happening here is we're going to go ahead and identify that we have two files. We have file one, so I'll call that F sub one, and we have file two, F sub two. Our final file should look like this. We're going to have the text from file one, so I'll call that T sub one. Right below that, I'll have the text from file two, we'll call that T sub two. And then we'll have the data from file one, like this, D sub one. And then we'll have the data from file two, we'll call that D sub two. Notice here, that's all we have. We don't have a header or a simple table. We basically want our output to look like our output from the P1A assembler. The only difference here is we have to go ahead and work with multiple files here and resolve differences. So when I say resolve differences, what does that mean? So going back to the example over here, we can see that we have this item in the relocation table right here. Sub adder undefined zero. What does that tell us? This tells us basically what global labels are going to be defined within this file. So right here, we reference sub adder, but it's not being used. So we really don't care about that. What we care about, though, are these two entries inside the relocation table. The relocation table basically tells us what entries do we have to adjust the offset for, or maybe do we have to adjust what the fill is. So in the case of this, we can see that we have zero lower than five, which basically means that on line zero of this file, we have a dependency on the label five, and that's for the lower word instruction. So our job is to basically go through and resolve those differences. Right here, we can see we have two entries. Right here, we have neg one. That basically means that on line zero of this file, um, there's going to be some opcode load word that has a dependency on neg one. And right here, we can see that we have a fail statement, which is dependent upon sub one existing. So the interesting thing, thing here is to understand there's two big differences happening here. The first one happening is if we had to resolve a local label versus resolving a global label. So the process looks something like this. So I'm first going to go ahead and delete these header sections because they're kind of just bloat right now. You will want to use these to go ahead and do your calculations for the offset, but I'm going to delete them for now. So our first line right here, we have this machine code. The first thing I recommend doing is going ahead and determining, OK, is there a dependency on line 0 for this opcode? So right here, we can see that we have 0 load word 5. So that means um, our first dependency is going to be on load word at line 5. Before we do this, though, I just wanted to go ahead and highlight what our actual like assembly code looks like. So I know we give it to you guys in machine code. That's the objective here. But we can actually look at it like this. So this is our main file right here. And this is sub one. This is all before the assembly process. Our final product is going to look something like this. So we're first going to go ahead and, again, going back to this right here, we have text one, text two, data one, data two. So our end file is going to look like this. Go ahead and take text one. We'll go ahead then and take text two, take data one, and then we take data two. So our final file's going to look something like this. The big thing to understand here is, let me go ahead and just indent these over. Cool. So what's happening here is, for example, load word 015. Originally, in this file, we compiled it or assembled it. We said that five had an offset of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 an offset of six. So we're going to go ahead and resolve this with six. So we already did this in P2A. The big difference here is what line is five now defined at? It's now defined at line nine, actually. This is line nine. So we have six right here, but we need to update that. So whenever we go to this line in our machine code for the first file, we want to figure out, is there going to be a dependency inside of this uh, line right here? And there is, because we see zero load word five. What that means is that on line zero, and it's load words that implies it's in text. So on line zero of text, there's a dependency on the label five. And this is line zero in text. So we have to go ahead and adjust this. Now notice here how this is five as a local label. What that means is that five has to be defined within the data section of this file right here. We can see it's right here, but we need to figure out 
what line is this actually at within the data section. The trick to solving this is noticing whenever we put these two files together like this, we can see that, again, going back to this graphic right here, we have text one, text two, data one, data two. So I'm just going to go ahead and go back to this. And the question I have for you all is, what is the only thing separating this call to five right here from its definition right here? Originally said the offset was six, which is basically the distance to go from all of this to right here. So notice here, the only thing we're actually adding in between these files is going to be text two. So the length of text two is three in this case. And if we go back to the assembly code right here, we can see that the only thing again that we added is this load word add in JALR statement. So we go ahead, we take the size of text two and we add this to our original offset. So in this case, we said this was six, we do six plus three, and then we get nine. So going back to this example right here, what we do actually is we'd go ahead and take this line right here, calculate its new offset, which we said was gonna be three more because again, going back to this graph right here, we have text one, text two, data one, and text two is the only thing separating this local label from its data section. So we'd go ahead and add text two size in. So text two size is three, we get that from the header, we go ahead and add three to this, and we get that. Cool. Next line right here, we're going to go ahead and do the exact same process. So we look at our relocation table. We see that on line one, we have load words instruction that has a dependency, sends load words and data, and we're looking at line one of text. Then we know there's a dependency that exists here. This is a dependency, though, on a global address. So what to do here is, first of all, figure out where is subadder defined at? So we'd go ahead and look through every single files symbol table. So this one right here, subadder exists. It's referenced, but it's not defined because we have a U right here. So we go ahead and look at file two's symbol table. We can see right here that it's actually defined at data one. So based upon that, if we go back to this right here. We have a reference to, is it subadder? Yeah, subadder, cool. Subadder right here. And remember, if we have a global address that we're not, is not defined in that file, we're actually putting an offset of zero in. So right here, for this right here, our offset is actually zero right now. But going to the file, we've now actually defined where subadder is defined at, it's defined right here. So it's new offset is gonna be whatever line number this is defined at. And this is defined at line zero, one, two, three, four, five, 11, cool. So what we wanna happen is we wanna go ahead and change subadder to be 11 instead of zero. The question is, how do we go about doing that? So what we can do in this case is, again, we see there's a dependency that exists right here. We then go ahead and loop through all the simple table entries. We see that it exists right here. And we see it's defined in data. And we know we're looking at file two right now. We're looking at file two simple table. So what that means is that subadder is located right inside this section right here. It's inside file two's simple table at data one. So that means it's right here. So we have to figure out what line number is that. So if we're starting at line number zero in text one, and we want to figure out where it's located at, if we go ahead and take the size of text one, size of text two, size of data one, and then we know what line it's at in data two, because it says right here, it's at data one of file two. So based upon that, what we can do is go ahead and take, again, size of text one, size of text two, size of data one, plus that offset given to us in the symbol table, and that'll give us our answer. So we have six plus three, and I think the next one is just one, and we add one to it, so we get six, nine, 11. So we then go ahead and change the offset from zero to 11. So I'd go ahead and do this, plus 11, which is going to be 63. Cool. And then for the next four, we actually don't have to do anything because if you look at the assembly code. Again, it's just going to be JLR, BEQ, BEQ halt. Again, BEQs don't need to be adjusted because they're PC relative. So, and also they're not inside the relocation table. So we can just go ahead and directly copy over these four. No changes need to be made. After that, we go ahead and work on text two. So text two, again, again, we have the text file stacked like this. So we have text one, text two, data one, data two. So we just went ahead and resolve text one. Now we have to go through and resolve text two. So to resolve text two, we do the exact same process. Look at our relocation table. We see that the dependency exists on line one of text because we're using a load word instruction on line zero. So this instruction right here is a dependency on neg one. 
we would do the exact same process of determining, just looking back at this diagram, we're currently looking for a word, neg one, that is referenced right here. And then it's defined inside data two. Again, we know it's defined inside data two because it's a local label. Otherwise it won't compile. So we know that neg one is inside of data two and it's being referenced in text two. So this is a key mistake people make. They'll go ahead and assume that, okay, to calculate our new offset, we're gonna go ahead and just add data one to it. The issue is, is that going back again to the assembly code, if we look at this right here, neg one, it's actually gonna be defined on line three. So if we just go ahead and we add the size of data one to it, we would say that it's on line four, but that's not accurate. Neg one's actually defined at line, I think this is line 10. And we're saying right here that it's at line three. So what's happening here? What we didn't account for is the fact that text one exists on top of this and that's taking up line space. So if we do wanna go ahead and figure out where this is actually located at, we have to go ahead and also add in text one. Remember, if it's a local label, we're already accounting for the size of text two and data two because we already have its relative address resolved for that file. We have to go ahead and add in the stuff separating it. So text one and data one are both separating it. So we have three already there. We add six and then we add data one, which is gonna be one, we get 10. So then our new offset is gonna be 10. So in reality, all I'm doing here is just adding seven to it. So I would go ahead and take this and add seven to it. So I get nine zero, yeah, cool. And then the next two, we actually don't have to resolve anything for. Um, even though fills in a relocation table, we resolve that for the data because fills in the data section, not the text section. So I just go ahead, copy these two over, put it right here, and then our text is done. The data section, again, we'd look through data one first, see if a dependency exists. No dependencies exist in data for file one. So I just go ahead, copy over the five, put that here. And then we can see that we have a dependency at line one of data. So I'd copy in this right here. And then we have a dependency on sub one, which is going to be a local label. So what this means essentially is that, so this is very similar again to just like the load word and store word for local labels. What we're doing here is again, we're figuring out where is sub one defined. It's gonna be a local label. So it has to be defined either inside of the text or data section within file two. Right here, we can see it's defined at line zero. So from that, we can infer that it's actually defined within the text of file two. So what we can gather here is that, let me erase these real quick. We have, whoops, there we go. Sub one's being referenced down here, it's in data and it's local, and then it's being defined somewhere up here. And again, I know that because it was located at line zero before we actually went ahead and uh, during the linking process or during the assembling process, sub one, that fill sub one was resolved to be zero. So what that means again is that we know our text size is gonna be three from the header file. So since zero is like less than three, that means that sub one's located inside text. So from that, we see to figure out where is sub one located now? So the question is like, what stuff was added above where sub one's defined? In that case, it's just gonna be text one. So I'd go ahead and just add six to this. So our original offset plus six will give us the answer. So in this case, we have zero, we do zero plus six, and we get six. And a couple of things on this, because again, it can get a bit confusing. If we had sub one defined, let's say sub one was defined inside data two, that will change our process because instead of us going ahead and having to add in just text one, we also have to add in data one. So you can see here that wherever your label is defined at depends on like what you add to it for the new offset. You have to calculate where it will be located in a new file and then account for that fact. So since sub one, we originally said, well, for this, the case of the spec, sub one is defined inside text two right here and it's being referenced in data two, we need to figure out what line is sub one located at. From our file, we know that it's located at line zero with respect to file two, so it's located right here. And it would be zero for file two, but the question now is once we link it up, we add inside text one up here. So we have to go ahead and add in the six right here. So we do zero plus six and we get six. If it was say on line like three or four, 
inside file two, that would imply it's inside the data section. So we then have to go ahead and account for the size of text one and the size of data one. All right, hopes this helps. Uh, if you have any questions, leave it in Piazza. And yeah, good luck in the project.